all, I'm still getting a ton of questions about the exceptions, and I think that this may just best be clarified in a quick video to everybody. So we're talking about here the exceptions that occur when you have a fully filled or half filled energy shell. Let's take one line of the periodic table and look at it. The second one actually has a little bit of uh, exception to the exception, and so we're going to take a look at the third one. So here I just wrote out the third line of the periodic table so that we have it kind of all set up for us. Let's talk first about effective nuclear charge. And I'm going to write that one on top since that's our reason for pretty much most of the other trends. We know that as we go to the right, it increases. Now, we also know there's some exceptions. That occurs during half-filled, fully-filled subshells, or at least might, and we need to consider it. So the ones here that we need to consider for each time that we are ranking anything is magnesium, phosphorus, and argon. Now let's look at the rest of the periodic trends. We'll do atomic radius first, since we th know that that one doesn't really have very many exceptions. As we go to the right, the atomic radius is going to decrease. This is due to the trend, of course, but remember that's not really a good answer for why. It's happening because of the effective nuclear charge. Now let's look at ionization energy. While in general, the higher effective nuclear charge as we go to the right is going to increase ionization energy. This one has some exceptions. As a general rule, the exceptions of fully filled and half filled energy shells are enough to make the atom increase or decrease by about one what we'll call switch of an element. So here, it's going to take more energy to remove an electron from a fully filled or half filled subshell. And so magnesium is going to be higher than you would expect. And phosphorus is going to be higher than you expect. And argon is going to be way higher than we expect. Now, of course, argon doesn't have anything to switch with. But I just think it's worth noting that it would be really, really high. So when we go to write this one out, now it is like that. Notice the magnesium and the aluminum will switch, but the magnesium doesn't jump up higher than the silicon or the phosphorus. And similarly, the phosphorus and the sulfur switch, but the phosphorus doesn't jump up over the chlorine and certainly not over the noble gas. Now let's look at electron affinity. For electron affinity, as we go across the periodic table, it will generally increase. Our increasing effective nuclear charge is going to increase our likelihood of an atom gaining an electron. However, we know that this too, much like ionization energy, is going to be based on electron configurations as well as effective nuclear charge. We also know that the exceptions occur in the same places, the half-filled and fully-filled subshells. For the most part, they're only going to be able to switch one. Now this is not true for the noble gases, which are special, but for everything else. So here, our magnesium will now be less than our sodium because it's a fully filled S subshell. Our phosphorus will now be less than our silicon because it has a fully filled subshell. And our argon, because it's a noble gas and that's extra special stable, is going to be all the way back. So when we go to write this out, we have Mg is less than Na. Notice the only one that is allowed to skip all the way back to the beginning is Ar. Mg and Na only switch one. Phosphorus and silicon only switch one. Hopefully this helps you out in remembering the orders of the electron affinity. You may want to go back and notice why I didn't choose the second row to do this exercise with, and that's because nitrogen is actually a bit of an exception to this, 
and it's stable enough just based on the way that the electron configuration works and the energy shells work in the second energy level that it does actually skip all the way back to the beginning but that's um, that's an exception to the exception actually